so till now we have what we have seen is the design procedure of socket and speaker joint okay uh, most of the times they they say you write the design procedure and so what you have learned um, about the design procedure you have to write okay but sometimes they will ask you problems also for example in winter 2004 this was asked design a quarter joint for a maximum load of 6 kilo newtons that is the p p is 6 kilo newtons 6 kilo newtons means what you should not put 6 uh, only it should be 6000 because k is 1000 so 6000 you should put p then quarter joint parts are made of c20 steel okay though here a carbon steel number is given this is of uh, not of much importance as far as this problem is concerned because they have given the uh, stresses the safe stresses uh, for it are as follows this is tensile stress sigma t is given as 60 newton per mm square all these things should be given in newton per mm square otherwise you convert it into newton per mm square okay or mpa newton 1 newton per mm square is 1 mpa okay compressive stress sigma c is given as 100 newton per mm square you see see uh, ever this material is this material normally all materials are more uh, strong in compression that means they can withstand more compressive stresses than the tensile stresses okay this is 100 only 100 whereas this is 60 only so compressive strength is more and tensile strength is less you can see here and shear stress tau that is the uh, permissible shear stress is 40 newton per mm square see normally sigma c will be the highest then sigma t then after that below that only shear stress will be there okay and sketch all sectional areas under failure areas under failure they are specifically asking so there will be marks for area those people who are not drawing the areas they will lose marks so you are expected to draw this line diagram it is not necessary that you should use pen pen, uh, pen uh, and a pen, uh, uh, pencil and uh, draw to the scale you see with the pen itself with the pen uh, you see the rough figure you draw See, don't waste much time this should be you should be able to finish in one minute or uh, so see you practice it okay so first first is we find what is the diameter of the rod you know that the diameter of the rod area is pi by 4 d square this is the area you have to show this diameter also when you're drawing the area diagram and then so you know say sigma t load upon area sigma t is 60 load is uh, 6000 upon area pi by 4 d square from here you will find out this so d comes to uh, 11.28 so but we cannot uh, we will not be using fractions in design mostly because the dimensions no you won't find uh, 11.28 diameter rod in the market you will have uh, either 10 mm 11 mm 12 mm like that so you have to pay, take a round figure so you approximate it to 12 mm that will be the diameter of your rod okay next step next step is to design the spigot um, end that is finding of uh, d1 so this is the thing and uh, you have to see in this figure so this book uh, they have not shown the um, the notations what is d2 what is uh, t and what is uh, you know d1 and other things okay so anyway you know this equation um, i am not going to discuss how this equation is brought that we you saw in the previous thing and the, the thickness of the quarter t is equal to 0.3 d you see in the mcq i asked one question how much should be the diameter uh, the, the thickness of this and it was given uh, 0.31 and so so many students would, would did not answer see at least whatever is close to the value you should answer see if you are taking d in terms of d t is 0.31 d in, in terms of uh, d1 you are taking it will be t is equal to d1 by 4 or 0.25 of d1 like that it is okay so from the empirical relation this is the empirical relation you should remember this empirical relation okay this is equal to 0.3 into 12 12 is uh, diameter we found out in the previous step so it comes to uh, 3.6 again the quarters you cannot find uh, of 3.6 so you have to round it you have to round it and you have to take 4 this rounding you should do okay 
that you will learn by and by by the end of the um, by the end of this course when you finish this subject you will know how to round it and all where to round and where not to round you will understand okay so for the time being this 3.6 uh, uh, three see either it should be 3 or uh, 4 it cannot be 3.6 3.6 plate you will not have, um, get in the market okay you see out of the mark uh, the plate only you have to cut a quarter okay 4 mm plate you take and cut a quarter so therefore the thickness will be 4 okay and from this equation uh, this will be like a quadratic equation like this okay and quadratic equation you know they see this mathematics i'm not going to tell you now okay if the, this is uh, um, minus b plus r minus uh, square root of uh, uh, what what is that uh, a square minus uh, b square minus 2ac 4ac by 2a something like that this will be equation is there no that you have to use here and you take the value and this value is coming to 38.31 and again we cannot take 38.31 okay because 38.31 also and, and when, when the dimensions are larger even 39 you can not find in the market so you have to round it to 40 mm okay all these standard values you will get from the data box or you know see by the end of this course you will come to know what are the standard values so you have found out even also next you have to uh, consider the shearing of the cotter uh, this is the area and you have to show the dimensions uh, the, the proportions also uh, okay notations also okay this is the sigma c the, this one you find out uh, from this d1 okay you see here here it came 40 and uh, here it came only 15 see one d1 we found 40 another d1 came to 15 only so which of which of the two is bigger 40 is bigger so 40 is the final answer okay you can put a box like this to about it and you say this is the final answer and then this spigot collar diameter uh, subjected to crushing this is the crushing area and uh, this is the formula that we use here sigma c sigma c is 100 p is uh, thousand, uh, 6000 and uh, from here you will find out d okay next uh, you come to the spigot collar diameter considering the mm, crushing failure okay uh, this is the same thing uh, yeah yeah this point is repeated again okay come come to this okay consider spigot collar and shearing to find the thickness t1 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 is the thickness here this one the the, the spigot collars thickness okay the formula used is tau uh, is equal to load upon area area is pi d1 t1 d1 is already known p is given tau is given tau is shear stress here okay you should be careful if it is tensile stress use sigma t if it is compressive stress use sigma c if it is a shear stress use tau okay and then from this equation you will find out what is t1 okay and did you find it yeah where where did you find it okay you should find out maybe that uh, step is missing in this diagram okay and then you have to find out the distance a that is the distance of the end slot from the spigot okay this the, this is the uh, equation because it is considered failing in shear and it is a double shear it is a area is 2 into d1 into a and then from this you will get a you see the, the, this is the one this is uh, d1 into a this is d1 this is a this is rectangle and rectangle on both sides because it is double shear that is why this area 2 into d1 into a okay and then next the outside diameter of the socket so this figure this figure i asked you how to kind of find out the area i don't know how many of you have done it okay anyway again here you may get a quadratic equation and uh, from that quadratic equation you solve it and uh, you find out how much it comes and it comes to 41.66 and round it to 42 okay and then next the diameter of the uh, collar socket collar so here uh, the socket collar is uh, subjected to crushing so this area this formula we will use okay 
you substitute and you will get this value okay and then next come to the okay now next come to the thickness of the spigot collar so this is uh, uh, known to fail in double shear so this is the area of that okay this is a shear stress shear stress is load upon area shear stress is p upon area area uh, put the values uh, okay what values you should put you have finally whatever you have finalized not the fractions rounded values only you should put here okay then you will get c this much c is coming to 4.68 or something okay you can he has rounded it to 6 but you will say why not 5 okay if you even if you round it to 5 no problem in your that's why i told you all people will not have the same values so in design everybody will not get the same values a little here and there difference will be there then the the uh, yeah this is the uh, okay this is what we have found out okay then the design of the quarter 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 you know how does quarter fail quarter fails like this in shear okay in double shear what is the area the area of quarter failure is uh, 2 into bt okay and this is shear failure why 2 because it is double shear tau is load upon area okay tau is 40 from this 18.75 or something b we are getting we round it to uh, 20 but why why not 19 see 19 also sometimes are, when the thicknesses are becoming bigger even if this odd numbers you may not find okay uh, you may find uh, 16 then you may find 18 then you may find 20 you cannot round it to the lower side in design you remember you cannot round to the lower side you should always round it to the higher side even if it comes to 17 18.1 you cannot take it as 18 because any area less than um, you know that calculated by the formula will fail so we should it should not fail it should be it can be a little thicker it is okay but it should not fail so we cannot take 18 we have to round it to uh, 19 or 20 but 19 plates may not be available therefore we round it to 20 okay this is how you find this okay that is how this is finished okay now coming to this uh, figure I see one minute here students let us see socket sleeve and quarter joint you see here are two quarters and this is the sleeve and these are two rods and this is the assembly that is the sleeve sleeve is having some uh, slots for the quarters and this is one rod one rod actually this rod should be of this size only but here the rod, uh, the rod is made the diameter is made enlarged why is it made enlarged because when you make a hole here and uh, uh, you know if the diameter is this much only then it becomes weak in that place so so wherever whenever there is a hole created slot is created then what you do you do is you increase the diameter in that place okay that's why this diameter is more compared to the rod diameter and this rod is inserted inside the sleeve then the another rod is similar rod and the holes should exactly match that is when we can insert the quarters so insert the quarters like this you see quarters are tapered you see they are wider at the top and narrower at the bottom and as we said before quarter is straight on one edge and tapered on the other edge this is straight here on the taper these two rods uh, um, okay they are coming and meeting here 
it is not necessary that they should exactly meet also. But the joint is made. You see, it is actually, this will be connected to some part. This will be connected to some part. You see, we are only seeing the joint of it. Okay, like that. You see, the, the here for animation purpose only they are rotating it. These things are not for rotation purposes. They will be steady only because otherwise, you see, the tape, if it is because this is tapered, it will fall away. It won't rotate. You see, as socket and spigot joint also will not take any rotation. Similarly, this sleeve and cotter joint also will not take any rotation. Okay, only tensile and compressive forces it can bear, not any torsion. Okay. Okay, now coming to the design of the sleeve and cotter joint. You see, this is the um, um, sleeve and cotter joint. You see this outside thing that is there, the sleeve. This all outside things should be shaded in one direction only because this is one part. This and this, 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 these are all should be shaded in one direction. That means it is inclined 45 degrees like this. Uh, everything should be inclined 45 degrees. So this is the sleeve. Okay, into sleeve, this rod is inserted. How the rod is? Rod is of the diameter D and in an enlarged portion, this enlarged portion is diameter D too. Okay. And then this outside diameter of this sleeve, inside diameter is D1, D, D2 only, but outside diameter is D1. Okay. And then uh, two quarters are inserted. One quarter here, one quarter here. Okay. And there are clearances of 3 mm or so are left here. On, for this quarter, clearance is because we are pulling it here, gap will come this side because this material will be coming here. Okay. And then because we are pulling this, this side, this is pushing here. So this will be pushed here. So gap will be left here. So these will be uh, uh, on the opposite sides. Similarly, clearances are here also. Okay. And then uh, as far as the distances are concerned, from the quarter to the end of the sleeve, uh, uh, to the end of the sleeve is A. The quarter width in the center is B. Then uh, from the quarter to the um, enlarged end of the rod is a C. Okay, and these are values same. Okay, so totally, totally this distance may be 4D. Okay, and this length of the quarter is taken as 4 times of D. Okay, that's so total length of the um, of the uh, sleeve is taken as uh, 8 times of D and the total length of the this enlarged portion of the rods may be around 9D. Okay, like that. You see, in this design procedure, see this is done in a different way. How this is done? You see, first you have to find out the diameter of the rod. Once the diameter of the rod is done, by empirical relations, these are all by empirical relations. You fix the values. See, D1, the outside diameter of the sleeve, outside diameter of the sleeve means, D1 means this one, the sleeve's outside diameter. That one, first they have fixed as 2.5. Then D2, diameter of the enlarged end of the rod, that is uh, this one. This is they have fixed as 1.25D. You see, what, how, how will you remember? You have to remember these values. Okay. They see, there are not many things that you have to remember in machine design. Okay. These are the notations you remember. Okay. You will say sometimes, oh, sir, if I, instead of 1.25D uh, here, okay, if I have used 1.3D, what? Okay. That is not much difference. Nobody will... Uh, say that it is wrong and uh, you will not lose marks just because you took 1.2d or 1.3d instead of 1.25d okay actually from where are you getting 1.25d see 2.5 means 10 upon 4 okay this is 10 upon 8 okay that is 1.25d that's how its values are coming 
then the thickness of the cotter thickness of the cotter where is the thickness of the cotter in the side view you can see the thickness in the front view the it is shown broad but because it is rectangle the breadth is seen in the side view the side view the thickness will come which is t and that t is taken as you see both both values are given either 0.31 d or d2 upon 4 see this is d and this is d2 you remember these well things okay okay length of the cotter is four times of d and the width of the cotter again you see as the diameter of the rod we will find out by using the formula width also will width of the cotter also will you we will uh, find by uh, the formula okay and then a what should be a this a this is a and this b is found out by formula a and c these are proportions okay these proportions what are the proportions a will be 1.25 d and c um, c did they mention anything there okay maybe that is also 1.25 d how, how it is we'll see and p is the load uh, load carried by the rod you see you see one thing you remember these joints cotter and sleeve joint uh, uh, socket and spigot joint or sleeve and cotter joint you see these joints or afterwards we will see the jib and cotter joint you see all these joints they are not used for um, you know uh, for uh, rods which uh, will rotate they are for rods which are stationary and there is no play here you see you see it is it becomes a tight joint it is becomes a tight joint there is no play here or any angular movement or lateral movement it's nothing it will it will allow whereas afterwards we will see knuckle joint knuckle joint allows a little bit of movement okay so here you see see both these rods see this rod you know the rod end shows this is a circular rod this is also circular rod. Circular rods are joined with the help of socket and spigot joint as well as sleeve and cotter joint. Okay, coming to uh, how do you design? Design procedure. First, you have to design the diameter of the rod and it is the same formula. You have to consider failure in tension and uh, area is pi by 4 d square. You will have to draw the diagram because in a diploma exams, this area uh, drawings have marks so you draw the area circle hash and um, uh, draw the hatching of it and then and you put uh, you show the notation d work okay and then you can also write the area separately area is equal to pi by 4 d square then again uh, sigma t uh, is load up p upon a then you can write this p upon pi by 4 d square so from this you will be able to find d because p will be given and sigma t will be given d is found out this is the first step that you found out. next uh, now now next uh, thing is diameter of the enlarged end of the rod enlarged end of the rod you see the enlarged end of the rod you see this is the enlarged end of the rod this diameter is d2 okay but will it fail here no it will not fail here it will fail across the slot only because there it is weak okay you, you here it will fail so what will be the area of failure it is the circle d2 and in this there is a slot for uh, slot of thickness t for the cotton okay so what will be the area this area you will be you should be able to write area is pi by 4 d2 square minus d2 into t okay and this this is the equation equation is uh, stress is load upon area otherwise otherwise load is equal to stress into area okay uh, so stress into area and here two unknowns are there d2 and t so therefore we have to take an empirical relation only one formula and two equations therefore what you should do uh, sorry one for there are, there is only one one equation and two unknowns so therefore what you have to do you have to reduce the unknowns to one Therefore, we use this empirical relation t is equal to d2 upon 4 and substitute here. So, it becomes an equation with one unknown and then you can find out d2 and after finding d2, you can find t also. Okay. Next, how will you find the 
um, uh, you see and you can uh, find the um, you know stress induced in the crushing you see here the cotter is crushing cotter is crushing against that enlarged portion of the rod okay enlarged portion of the rod's diameter is d2 and thickness is t this is the crushing area so crushing area is p upon d2 into t so here now sigma c you can put i suffix that means induced crushing stress induced crushing stress you will get with these values because you know d2 also t also p also and then you have to check if sigma c i is less than the sigma c that is given in the problem then it is safe otherwise you will have to increase one of these two dimensions and uh, uh, and what you have to do you have to recalculate okay okay next step is failure of sleeve across the slot intention okay failure of the sleeve failure of this sleeve sleeve means this outside one across the slot you see here it fails because of the tensile pull peak because of the tension tensile load okay here it fails so uh, how it will look you see it will be a big circle of d1 and inside that the, 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 this hole is there this hole is of diameter d2 and then there will be oh, from the top to the bottom there will be a slot of thickness t in the side view you should see all these things okay so what will be the area of that area of that will be this one pi by 4 d1 square minus d2 square minus d1 minus d2 into t okay and then now you are uh, stress is load upon area or load is equal to area into stress so you put in this value from this you will be able to find out the outside diameter of the sleeve outside diameter of the sleeve is d1 we have already found out d2 okay and already we were having t d1 we will find out from here though it is a quadratic equation you should be able to know how to solve the quadratic equations those people who don't know how to solve the quadratic equations see you brush it up again you learnt in mathematics or ask your friends even now the, you can put the um, uh, the values of a b c of the quadratic equation in a in a in a in your calculator and it will directly give the answer so you learn that if you don't know you find out uh, through youtube or some other means because you, the calculator is not there I'm not, I'll not be able to tell you here. If you were in the classroom, I would have solved and given. Okay. Now the width of the cotter. <coughs> width of the cotter, you know, as usual, uh, it is uh, failing in double shear. So double shear means the area is BT uh, for one side and for two sides, it's 2BT. Okay. Then uh, shear stress is load upon area or, or load is equal to um, area into shear stress. So in this formula, see uh, tau s it, it, there is no need of s there you can simply say tau because tau itself is shear stress then uh, we by writing uh, uh, this suffix s we are not proving anything so you use just tau tau into 2 bt tau will be given p will be given and t is already found out so you will get b and whatever value you get if it is not in round figure if it is in coming in fractions you have to round it okay then you have to find the distance a this a what is the distance how are you going to find in our uh, figure uh, yeah this is the a this is the a how are you going to find you know all the such areas you now will be found out considering the shear failure only so considering the uh, enlarged end of the rod under shear failure of that okay the resisting area will be two times of a into d2 you see by looking at the figure and drawing here you will understand you should draw it say please draw you see it is not there in the book doesn't mean that you should not draw and in the exam the examiner when he is correcting he will expect you to draw the area uh, diagrams and it is not very difficult and it will make your uh, understanding simple okay two into a into d2 resisting area okay and the strength equation will be this uh, load is equal to area into stress 
area is 28 into D2. Here D2 is known, tau will be given and P is already given in the question. Uh, so you will find out what is A. And again, now, okay. You see, actually, initially we said all these things should be taken as proportions. Then what are we doing? See, in this step, we need not find out what is D2 or T or anything. You put these values in this equation and you will, you, you will get what is sigma T. And this sigma t, whether it is within proportion, permissible limit. Suppose, what is the permissible limit? Suppose the sigma t is coming, is, is, uh, uh, you say it is, it is 60, 60 newton per mm square. And when you calculated using this formula, sigma t is coming to 55. Okay, this 55 is less than 60, so the material can bear, so design is safe, you can write. Okay, everything you have to say like that. Here, no, when we are stressing induced crushing stress also, if the crushing stress is 100 and induced shear stress is coming to 90 or 80 or whatever, this is less than the uh, materials crushing stress, which is 100, therefore design is safe. In here also, what are you finding out? Here also, this sigma t you have to find out because all the values you are getting by proportions. Sigma t you will find out. That means sigma t i. I means induced. Induced means uh, uske andar jo stress aata hai actually. Wo. Okay. Sig See, yaha par is do prakar ke sigma t hai. Yek hai material ka taakat kitna hai. Dusra hai load ke karan uske andar kitna stress aara hai. So, uske andar kitna stress aata hai. Wo sigma t i hai. Aur uska pura capacity kitna hai. Sigma t hai. Okay, sigma T i and sigma T. समझ में आ रहा क्या? See, suppose आपको आपके आपको दुकान जाके दूध पैकेट खरीदना है. तुम्हारे जेब में 50 रुपए हैं. दूध पैकेट 20 रुपए का है. ठीक है? So तुम्हारे अंदर कितना तुम्हारे पैकेट के ऊपर कितना बोझ पड़ रहा? 20 रुपए. That is like sigma T i. और तुम्हारे पास कितना पैसा है इसे? That is sigma t, like that. So what should happen? Whatever is that, uh, um, you know, दूध पैकेट का जितना भी दाम है, वो तुम्हारे जेब में जितना है, उससे कम होना चाहिए तभी everything is safe, design is safe, and we can say like that. So okay. So here also sigma t i, whatever is coming, that should be less than sigma t. Okay. So from this, you find out sigma t and check it. And here, you will get Tau, because these values are all we got through the, oh, okay, here uh, B proportion we did not find. So, here you get the, get to B, putting this value which is given in the problem. And then A, A, I think 1.25 D or something they have used. A value you know, D2 value you know, you know, what you are finding out is, what is induced shear stress, that means tau I, okay. And once tau I is known, you check whether this is less than the tau given in the problem given for that material if it is less okay safe if it is not less what if it comes more then you have to change the values you have to increase the area so that the stress comes less okay you you if you solve problems you will know you have to solve these problems you see just by looking at the video uh, you will not hear you have to take sit sit down take the pen paper and write then only you will know and uh, find distance C. C, this is considering the uh, failure in double shear. Okay. Then the area will be 2 times of D1 minus D2 into C. You see, I am not telling you how it is. You see, uh, you, you look at the diagram and you find out how this area comes. Okay. Then the strength equation you can write. Um, load is equal to area into stress. So, um, stress you use the you give use the given value p use the given value and uh, we have found out d1 and d2 also. So only c is non unknown and you will find out c. Okay, like this in these seven steps you will be able to complete the um, design procedure of this socket uh, sleeve and cotter joint. Okay.
ah okay now we will see about the another quarter joint which is jib and quarter joint okay dear students another joint this is jib and quarter joint the animation or the parts of it we will see you see this is the rod end this is the jib this is quarter and uh, this is the assembly the rod comes into the fork and the jib you see this is the, uh, how a jib looks it has taper on one side it will be inserted first and then the quarter will be inserted next the, you see see there is a taper on this edge of the jib and uh, on the quarter on this these two tapers match exactly so that this side it is a straight hole this side also there is a straight hole okay and this type of joint is used for square rods or rectangular rods say this is the joint okay now this is the diagram how you should draw see this is the sectional view they are cut into the in the middle and they are showing you see section in sectional view you see this uh, jib and quarter they are thin uh, in uh, uh, they are thin in their thickness very thin so such things are not shown in section though these two are also getting cut they won't show in section so here you see this is from here and from here this is the fork and this is the rod okay and uh, here also as with the socketed spigot joint there is a clearance this clearance of the maximum can be 3 mm 1.5 to 3 mm okay that will help to draw the rods together see this is the half section half section in machine drawing you may have studied in the half sectional view it is shown 